people. By people, I mean friends. By friends, I mean you. What's up, everybody? Nathan, you're you. That's my chair. You're here because of music and funerals. Isn't that interesting? But there's a beautiful parallel. I'm a musician, spent 13 years in the funeral profession. You can't have a beautiful song without tragedy. And you can't have a beautiful memorial or funeral without a beautiful song. So there's this element of victory and suffering and victory and and that tragic thing because it inspires it allows us to connect and here you are happy friday i am about to finish listening to my alma mater my high school catholic high play in the state championship they're down 12 but i'm listening but i wanted to hop on here we talked yesterday about we talked yesterday about what did we talk about yesterday Oh, unconventional side of funerals. Today we're talking about just how you <laughs> life is oftentimes mundane and we tend to think that, but it's in the mundane where the beautiful things are and it's in the mundane that we actually celebrate, right? My late grandfather, Frank, he taught me when I was 12 years old to tie a double ones or not. To this day, when I tie a double ones or not, something that he'd done for decades and he probably didn't want to do as far as teaching me. No, I wouldn't say that, but... It's not like he was excited about it. It's the thing that I remember and think about every time I tie my tie. It is my late grandfather. So those are the mundane things that we ultimately do celebrate. And hopefully, speaking of, we celebrate my alma mater's win at the state championship, which they hadn't won since the 90s. So that would be a pretty big, pretty big deal. And it's funny how unconventional is the perfect word for, hey, Joe, hey, my nose itches. Somebody's thinking about me. Unconventional is the perfect word for describing life, my life specifically speaking, because you plan things and you're like, oh, this is the path that I'm going to take. And it's not at all what happens. But I uh, want to give you a tour, if I can, of the space. So we're in, this is the console, but it's also the podcast desk, but it's also my desk, but it's also where I record a lot of my long form stuff right here on YouTube. There's a camera. The camera runs into the computer over there. This computer is just for audio. Keep that in mind. We only have one computer for audio. And then this computer is for audio and video. That's a confidence monitor, believe it or not. If you've seen like uh, the behind the scenes of like Justin Bieber singing Stay with Kid Leroy and he forgets the lyrics. <laughs> confidence monitor on stage. I'm the guy that would forget my songs. My, my the words to my songs this is uh the area where we'll have sit downs and chat with visitors of the upcoming episodes of the podcast and then you have i mean i have pictures of the kids everywhere because oh and there's the tiktok tree and i had to take some of the ceiling out <laughs> but uh that's what was i talking about the confidence monitor oh yeah confidence monitor yeah i forget the words to my songs and it's not because i'm drinking it's because i my brain but that's okay this is this is the space so on the other side over here is like casual it's not it's not finished yet but this is where people will be able to hang out when they're not recording or visiting or whatever today has been filled with a ton of education i was educating myself all afternoon on very unique funeral customs. Oh my gosh. There are some interesting ways in which people celebrate. And by celebrate, I mean bury their dead. Like in India until the 1850s, they, when someone died, a male, they would have an open pyre funeral and they would cremate the male in the open, open air and everyone who was gathering the widow as a sign of devotion to their husband would voluntarily jump into the flames and cremate herself with him because she would not continue life without. And then in 1850, whenever, uh, never, I think it was the British came and, and secured India, claimed India, they said, cease. So it became, oh, and if they didn't volunteer at one point before this happened, they were, they were, forced to essentially so it was a murder and then that was stopped but now in in is it ghana i believe i believe it's ghana 
Let me confirm that. What What is it? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'll have to confirm. But there is an area where they will... It's cannibalism. They, they think and believe that if their loved one dies and they they consume them, specifically the brain, up until the brain and eating of the loved one was causing neurological issues and disease. Hmm, who'd have thought? So they kind of slowed that. But nonetheless, the hundreds gather. I mean, I love you, but I'm not going to eat you. And uh, we we'll always say if it's legal, if it's ethical, uh, you know, that's some that's some walking dead stuff. And then you have coffins that are draped from the from the, the cliffs. Like they, they're, they're draping for, instead of burying coffins or putting them in mausoleums or they will even carve out in the cliffs. No, they, they, they hang them. They hang the coffins. You know. Now you know. Happy Friday, right? Yeah. So on my to-do list, here's my to-do list. I have to build a new website. Not we, the team, build the new website, new merch, new song, new song, song release. Can't tell you that yet. I, there's like three things I can't say. Dang it. I hate being bound by confidentiality agreements and stuff, but that's, that's fine. It's the nature of it. It's the nature of it. But I believe that what we've done... There aren't many in the profession, the funeral profession, the musician, mortician, that, that doesn't, I'm proud of that, but they're not meeting. I'm excited to meet you where you are. I'm, I'm excited to meet you here on the podcast, You'll Die Trying, and we just released the subscriber only bonus noise podcast, and then all the socials. It's really fun. I'm, I have a video that I can't wait to show you all. It's going to be hilarious. I found a, found a loophole in the funeral profession, in equipment for the funeral profession. And I'm excited to share it and show it in, in a fun, lighthearted way. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist at all. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna show that. I can't wait. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I was thinking about uh, also within when we were talking about you know, unique ways to celebrate and unconventional. I was thinking also, I always think about the music aspect of it and the, and the, the playlists. And I was thinking about songs that are, that are absolutely unforgettable, really, really good ones. And this, um, the song West by Westlife, I'll see you again. It may sound like really cheesy. It's this male group. They all sing like you know, Fergie and Jesus combined, they have angelic voices, but this song is so good. You can't listen to it in that, like, mo in that environment, right? In the right environment, it's so moving. Uh, I love that song. There's another, there's another song called Carried to the Table. It's more for your, those who are, are Christian faith practicing. It's very good. It's by a band called Leland. And then I, I really, I really challenge myself to not ever go the musical route of the stereotypical. And what makes a song for a funeral stereotypical? I get it. After so long and so many plays, when it becomes popular at a funeral, I guess that's when it's stereotypical. But there's, you know, the uh, Brad Paisley song, When I Get Where I'm Going. Like, that's a good song. I understand. And then the Dan and Lizzie dancing in the sky again it's played a lot but it's actually a really good one so i really am always coming up with and thinking about new music for funerals and there's like an unconventional song would also be the killers have a song called here with me love it it's so good i played it at my late grandfather's funeral i was i love the killers i've i've been following them since hot fuss came out in oath three or four and i have been a fan since and they have that that song and i was like that song is very fitting i challenge you listen to it check it out it's really good just like this cup of coffee i'm, I'm reading some of these notes i take notes like i said in the morning and at night time and 
I always write about this. I go back to whenever you're unconventional about the way you celebrate someone. I remember the man coming in. His four-year-old died at St. Jude's, and he was, if you shut your eyes and picture, like, what people in the mafia, the mob were like in the 70s and 80s, like, that's what you would think with this young man, big Chicago accent. His four-year-old had died, and he walks in. I greeted him at the door to make arrangements, and if I've said this story before, it's just moving. I opened the door for him, and he said, the first thing he says is I don't want funeral directors. And in my head, I'm internally, I'm feeling this sense of like, I need to protect. I want princes and princesses. And I'm like, hmm. And during arrangements, learning that this little girl loves Disney movies, loves all the princesses, has and collected all the Disney dresses. So after they had left, we gathered all the dresses. We lined the halls. I went and found a Prince Charming costume and hired a company that goes to usually birthday parties to dress up as the Disney princesses, and they worked as funeral attendants. And I wore Prince Charming and conducted the funeral that way. So when the family came in for first view, they didn't see funeral directors. They saw princes and princesses. And to this day, that is... That's the bar for me, right? Not just because it was a four-year-old or not because it, it's because of the intentionality. It was because of the efforts. It was because of how attentive we were and how we listened. And people, we all deserve to be acknowledged for our loves, for our efforts, for our works and that little girl deserved so her parents really you know they really deserve this this element of care that that we offered and it was really special it's something i think about i reflect upon it i write about it i have photos from that day where i had taken obviously behind with the with the the people in, that were dressed up as the characters. And I know that those parents are forever, forever grateful for. And those are where the incredible songs <laughs> come from. You know, those are the songs that that happen because of those acts, like the like the song Scared to Death It's Not Yet Out or Need You to Know that was released during Suicide National Suicide Awareness Month or Prevention Month rather because those four-year-olds and seven-year-olds and all those elements and people, they, ha- they weigh heavy on you. And so, you know, Need You to Know is that song about how you keep it, you know, I just need you to know I'm not well or... and. That was, that was a confession, really, because funeral professionals, they can't be sitting around boohooing in the corner. They've got to lead you, right? They've got to, they've got to be tough for you because if you're over there crying on the, the, the widow's shoulder, like, what the hell are, am I calling you for? You know, you're not helping, <laughs> you're not helping the situation, buddy. So I, I, I embrace those moments and I'm mindful of them and I don't forget them. And I think it's important to remember those things. So. You can look at you can look at something as painful and look at it continually in a negative light, or you can take the positive of it, which I try to do, and I spin it changes everything. Dr. Edith, that little nine well, I hope she's still living. In twenty seventeen she released a book called The Choice. She wrote a book and she was the young lady that uh, survived the Holocaust in Auschwitz and then grew up and channeled her grief and sadness and heaviness and turned it into the positive and became a a therapist and and changed a lot of lives for specifically soldiers with PTSD and and depression. And it was uh, very special. Many years you've probably heard or seen articles with her shows. She's a tiny little thing. But this book called The Choice 
it's going back to before pre Auschwitz pre when the Nazis take over and where I'm at right now is her father is just being taken and the women her her sister and mother are split from the father and it's talking about how they're slowly but surely she loses everyone and her grief over time becomes so heavy and palpable and so almost probably unmanageable and and i guess it's the it's the story of overcoming right and i only talk about that just because we're always overcoming something because life is tedious as hell so that's what i do in my beat laboratory as i'm writing or reflecting or creating content or talking with brand companies to partner you know not only am i looking for opportunity but opportunities where those thoughts feelings align right like i can partner with a mug company and say oh give me my money but i want to be passionate and i want my values and beliefs and vision to align with who i'm working alongside so that's how my brain works and i don't know how i even got there but welcome to my life welcome to my life my teammate Sandy today was talking about like, I can't turn it off. Like I can't turn off thinking about a process, thinking about an experience. Like how can it be better? What can I do? What can I do different? What can I do better? And, and, and I go to bed thinking about that. And I think for the, for someone with, with not a creative mind, I'll say it that way it doesn't make sense. And they're like, Oh, you need to leave it at the door and, and, and live. But this is living. This is life for me. So Sandy and people I'm around now they're and I encourage you to find that group, whether it's this big or this big people that just embrace what you're doing and say, yeah, it's okay. Like that's you. <laughs> if you, if you love the color purple, why would you paint your wall gray? That's a shitty analogy. If you love bananas, why do you, that's dumb too. You get what I'm trying to say. So I can't turn my brain off. I'm not going to turn my brain off. And until I, leave, I breathe my last breath, I'm going to make sure that you and the people around me know that they're loved and valued. So I just looked down and Joanna, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I, I was uh, thinking about today the pressure of social media. For, I think everybody, really, but this sounds like a very weird, but it has a point. Black China, of course, announced a little bit ago, but it's recirculating. Daily Mail just talked, just released more about how she quit OnlyFans. And this isn't a, about OnlyFans, or it's about how the pressures of social media platforms, and even for someone like her, who, who now has different values and beliefs, and wanted to make this drastic shift in her life and the way it would in which it applies you know not only fans but whatever social media platform it applies to creators influencers myself this is my this is my job and you know there, there's this sense of pressure that we put on ourselves to perform but you're not performing because you are you it's not a version of you it is you it's like at what point, like what is the, and I guess it's the going back to the not cutting, being able to cut it off, turn it off. And I wonder what your, I wonder what your relationship with social media is. It's obviously a safe place to, to well, it can be, it can be a dangerous place, but I hope it's a safe place. I hope it's, it's a beautiful and powerful tool as much like you know, chat GPT and AI can be, but it also can be used for not good. Just like this beautiful knife can cut through this delicious prime rib or this beautiful knife can do some, some harm. And I'm, I'm learning, you know, the costs of social media because it, it consumes me, but not in the way in which I'm always on an app consume. It's, it's, it's like, what content do I put here on YouTube? Like, what do they want to hear about next? And then listening to you all and your loves for certain 
topics, you know, because you're here for two reasons, really, uh, I believe. You were brought here because of, you are brought here because of the funerals and the inf information about it and to learn, and you're staying because of the music, or you're brought here because of the music and you're staying here because of the funerals, but it's the funeral and music world that we're constantly wanting to make sure that we let you in on. Because there are a lot of people that this is your first time here and you're like, who the hell is this guy? Well, I'm Nathan, a musician, spent 13 years in the funeral profession, you know? Um, it's it's uh, self-limiting beliefs. Like we, we, we create these ceilings for ourselves and it's like this. So that's what so social media has become for me in a sense. I'm like, oh, I don't think that, oh, I don't think Joanna or someone wants to see the, the space and place in which I record, but contrary, I believe that you do, you genuinely care. And that's awesome to know. So that's, that's what my brain does every single day, all day long. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> Welcome to my life every single day. It's like, get a grip. It's not happening. And if you're just watching, you know, you're probably like, who the hell, what in the world is this guy? Is certifiable. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm looking for the football game to see what the score is going to be. If I can find it. <gasps> Let's see if we can find it. Oh, it said live. I need to, I need to click that. Oh, it's going to make me pay for it. That's no fair. That's fine. But what are you excited about this weekend? Think about it. I hope it's something that you feel uh, hopeful about and know that. Do you know that time, do you feel like that time is just this slow snail or do you feel like it's a blip? You turn around and you're like, holy crap, it's 10 o'clock. You know, my, my, as you get older, my late grandparents, before they were, before they passed away, they would always talk about how it just, it just flies, it just goes and it's gone. I think so. I think it really is like, do good with the time you have. Driver's test, somebody, you're, that's amazing that you get to take a driver's test to just, you know what, listen the best thing that ever happened to me was when I was taking my driver's test, I was told to parallel park between this trash can, like the toter that gets pushed out to the to the road, and a parked vehicle. And I said to the to the instructor, I said, I cannot fit between that because I have very good depth perception. And they were like, yes, you can. I said, no, I can't. I went and to parallel park the 1995 Nissan Pathfinder, I hit the toter, and that just continued, and I parked, and he was like, you're right, you couldn't fit, so I passed, in other words, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't not pass, so it's, it's good, it's, it's good to uh, speak up, I guess, <laughs> I don't know, the moral of the story is, I don't really know, I have not a clue what the moral of the story is. But I do know that this week, there have been so many deaths of former politicians in the United States. Like the former uh, Secretary of State, the former, was it Speaker of the House? Um, the f and, then you, and then if it's not politicians, it's, it's football players and stars. It's been... Just a number of deaths this week, and and reporting on them is is wild. Could you imagine not having that information? Like, what did we do in the '90s? It took forever to get that information. Like, it was three days after, and the loved one had already been buried. But now it's immediate. Like, cool in the gang drummer dies, and the the Brazilian influencer died, and then the actor and the uh, General Hospital. I mean, there's just non. It's non-stop. It's non-stop. But before we had this immediate information, 
And that's another thing with social. Social media, it just, it welcomes. And that's a, it's like constant emergent for me. It's like, I want to get this information out because people come and want the information and they find it here. And I don't know if it's, I don't know. It's uh, pick your poison. At least I'm not out, you know, doing drugs and drinking and being an idiot. And instead I'm, I don't, I don't know. I, I, life, you know, we're all just a bunch of squirrels. We're all just a bunch of squirrels trying to get and gather a net. That's it. That's it. And that saying can sound differently than what's supposed to be taken. Basically, we're all trying to find our way and our food and prepare. So it's good to have a community of people like this to do this uh, with. That's that's fact. So that's my recap of the of the week. There's my brain. It's a pile of mush. And if you ate it, you would get neurological issues of your own. So don't. That wasn't funny. <laughs> what was that movie where the actor, he was a zombie, but he was feeling human feelings and they listened to music. And where's Amanda when you need her? She's the, she, I mean, I can Google it, but I was trying to get some, talk it through. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's Friday. That's Friday. So we have a bunch of videos that are about unconventional. We've talked a lot about unconventional things and ways of celebrating and you deserve to be celebrated. That's why funeral homes exist. This is the space. And I am excited at all the things that are to come. And I hope you are too. Because life's better with you in it, right? Today, class, we're going to talk a little bit about positivity. We were going to sell this. But I love <laughs> warm bodies. Yes. I love elephants. Did you know the elephants, they grieve the deaths of their loved ones? Like when they are walking, I don't, I, I've watched a lot of David Attenborough, but when they're, when they're walking or migrating, whatever the hell it is, and they say that an elephant had died in that space and place, it can be 25 years because they also don't forget, which is incredible, but it can be 25 years and they will all stop. And they've caught this on camera numerous times. They will stop the herd and have a, a memorial or a moment of silence or whatever they do, silence, what the fuck, where they'll have this memorial, where they'll recognize that space and place and how it is a place to re remember and honor someone that they loved, a, a fellow elephant. They don't forget anything either, and that's something that I can somewhat relate to because I, oh yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I can't forget things. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes, but it can be a beautiful thing too. So if anything, if you've learned anything today, it is, it's great to be unconventional. It's fine that you are the way that you are and you obsess over what you do and why you do it is because it's who you are. And to be different is great. And, you know, stretch yourself to do more than, right? Because that's what it's about. And make people feel loved. That's why we're, that's why we're seriously here. So that's your to-do for the weekend. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I am going to be announcing this on Instagram in just a short bit, but I will be in Louisville, Kentucky tomorrow. And in Louisville, Kentucky, because I live, I'm, I'm from Kentucky, so we're going to be leaving little surprises. We're going to be leaving some limited edition vinyls out at some places and giving hints along the way. And people who can find them can find them. There's some local sales going on. So hopefully that'll support some of our businesses. Yeah. Maybe if you're in the area, you can stumble upon a vinyl. Oh, here it is. All right. Until next time. Have a great weekend.
Be kind to yourself, and I'm honored to meet you here. I'll see you all very soon.